Nobody knows anything. Nobody. Keep your hands off my chicken. It's the horse sauce. And we're all like here, like blah, blah, blah. So your dad gets so crazy. Has there ever been a point where you're like, Dad, you've gone too far? I am an animal! And there's only so many times you can watch your dad nakedly fall out of a couch. When you have a kid, you die. Especially an actor who's like the most self-centered individual on the planet. The whole you is now the kid. Did you have any reservations about your kids following in your footsteps? I think everybody's got to be encouraged to do what they feel. So you have a new project on Broadway. We are playing father and daughter, yeah, father and daughter. so that's real. Yeah, we have a great play, and we have good people in it. Lucy and I were snorkeling, and I see a barracuda come at me. Oh, oh. and I just left. <laughs> I turn around, and he's gone. Right. You left me! I couldn't be more excited to get to the legendary Danny DeVito and his daughter Lucy, but first, gotta make a request. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and make sure YouTube knows you want more of Dad Saves America. Well, Danny, first, thank you for joining us on Dad oh, Saves America. Oh, I'm really excited about it. I love the idea of it, yeah. In the early days, uh, somebody said to me, I don't know who it was, said to me, you know, when you have a kid, you die. I was going to ask you about this. You know, the whole yeah. idea of it is, like, makes sense. You're in your 30s, say, okay, and you've lived like this, uh, you know, especially an actor who's like the most self-centered <laughs> individual in the, on the planet. By definition. You know? right? Yeah. That's it. You yeah. know, you're like, well, you're thinking about it. you, 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 you. The, the whole thing about it is that you... You, you die when you have a, and I went, wow, you know, and you really do. It's like really a, 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 a kind of a, the whole you is now the, the kid. It's all the focus, all the, every, all the attention, every, you may be ready for it and you may not be, but if you are, it's the most glorious thing in the world because all of that energy, you know, like, Sure, you've got to support everything. You've got to keep yeah. going. You don't just stop. It's just metaphorically speaking. You're you're literally and metaphorically speaking, you are focusing all of your time now on that new creature that's come into your life that is uh, it's so miraculous. Uh you know, it's funny because you you know, you jump right into that and that was my experience and no one actually prepared me for that. It was like all my self-centered ambition yeah. took second fiddle to it, him. It changes the whole perspective of life, you know. It's everything is, yeah, absolutely. There are a couple things. That one is very, very big. You got to know that. The other one that hit me, which was good, I was with my kids and I was in an airport. We were preparing to go on a trip and I was in a, a special area they gave me. I think it was American Airlines. And, and they said, you know, you could be there. We're, you know, nobody's gonna come autograph you and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, they'll leave so you alone. Just really leave you alone. So I had this area and Rhea had gone to get some magazines. It was me and the, and, and the two girls. And we were playing, we were on the floor and it was toys and there was stuff and Lucy was the oldest and Gracie was the baby and it was, you know, we were, you know. and a guy comes up to me, he says, uh, Mr. DeVito, he said, Mr. Buttons would like to come and say hello. You know who Mr. Buttons is? Okay. No. Okay, so <laughs> there's this famous actor named Red Buttons. A little bit before your time, he was a guy who was a, well-known comedian and, you know... Oh, I think I have heard of this, and, Mr. Buttons. And he also happened to have won an Academy Award, right, for his performance in They Shoot Horses, don't they? But I said to the guy, it was his bodyguard, obviously, or was something like that, and I said, yeah, I know Red Buttons. He was, like, he was really funny. I, you see him when I was a kid. He used to be on various variety shows and do his act and whatever, and then he was acting very good and he wins an academy award and he was great and so i said sure and he came up to me very nice man we talked a little bit he, he had seen the uh, taxi and blah 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 and it's all good and it's very nice and very flattering and he says i was watching you with your kids he said and i and i admired the way you were like you know hanging out with them and playing with them and doing the 
whole thing. You're on the ground and you're rolling around and whatever the thing. And he said, I, I just had a therapy session with my adult children. Okay. okay. And we had our ups and downs, yeah. he said. And we did a thing with the therapist where we looked at my career and my children and their life with me. And we marked off all the time that I was away. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. This is the hard part. And he stuff. said, I took 15 years away from my kids, me away from my kids. It hit me, right? My yeah. kids were young. And, and you, you know, this is like a common thing with my, all my representatives, my big high powered CAA people and my, my agents and lawyers and you anybody. Got a lot of demands on you. You know? So I said, no, no going away. I'm staying home. I'm not going to go out of town unless I can take my kids with me and they're with me all the time. So when I did Romancing the Stone and, you know, yeah. took them all to Mexico. When I went to Morocco to do Jewel of the Nile, this is years ago we're talking about, Gracie was couple months old, wrapped up in a blanket <laughs> under the seat in front of me or next to me in this, you know what I mean? In the, we all went packages, boxes, whatever. So I was lucky in the fact that I was able to do that. A lot of people are not able to do that. It's, you can't always take your kids on the road with you. But I, I think that that was one of the biggest, one of the big pieces of advice to me was read buttons saying to me I took it, it hit me so hard well here's somebody who has like achieved all the things that you as an actor want to achieve yeah. right and he's looking back on his life yeah. in his 80s yeah so I was blessed by the opportunity to be able to say okay where do I want to shoot this movie where do I want to do that where do I want to work I want to work where my kids are so that I can watch them watch him grow up. When did you first start to do creative stuff? Like, were, were you putting on plays when you were a kid? No, 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 no. No, I didn't do any of that. I, I'd go to the movies. That was my big thing. I, I'm a movie fan. I would go to, like, see uh, uh, every movie that ever came out. That was re I had a great thing, because in my town, there were five movie theaters. Um, there was the Mayfair and the St. James. They got the first-run theater uh, movies. I mean, like, you know, all the big movies that came out would go right there. You know, whatever was released in New York was released there at the same time because it was a resort town. So there was always a lot of people there in the summer, especially in the summer. But they did keep that chain going. Then you had the Lyric and the Baronet and you had the Paramount. And so the movies would move around. The Lyric had international films, always had foreign films there. So in terms of creative... Uh, Juices like from me, it was always I was always like in a uh, in the audience. I was every Saturday and Sunday I'd go to the movies. Sometimes during the week, if I could, I would sneak out and do it. So how did this? How did it? How did it start for you to get into acting? Did, uh, like well, when, when was it, that first moment where you're like, I I, I want to pursue this? I was thrown into this in a kind of a weird way because I, I was a hairdresser. I worked at my sister's beauty salon. And my sister Angela, she had a, a, a beauty salon. And I got thrown into like going, uh, she had me go to New York. She was the enterprising, basic uh, kind of like, she was the head of the family, basically. I mean, my mother and father were there, but they were like kind of like on the sidelines, you know. I was working for her. I, I had no desire to become a hairdresser or anything. I was cutting grass. She's just I like, was, Danny, you're going to come work with me? <laughs> I was cutting grass. Well, she, I was graduating high school and, and was not going to go to college. I was going to go get a job, whatever it was. Now, the fortunate thing was that she was, had this beauty parlor and, and she said, uh, you come, come to work with me. And I said, I don't want to do this, but I'll do it. 
because I, you know, this is cool. So she sent me to school, and I went to school, and I. So you went to like cosmo yeah. cosmetology school, beauty school in beauty Asbury. School. She buys me a smock, and she gives me the the wig block, and she gives me all the tools of the trade. And I'm not, you know, it's the summer, and she's showing me. I'm, you know, setting my mother's hair and my aunt's. One of my, aunt, you know, yeah, and you're her girlfriends. I'm practicing, and comes time to go to school, and she drops me off in front of the place, and I walk up stairs and to the big room that's got all the stations in it, the Wilford Academy, Beauty Academy it was called, right? And I walk in. I don't know what to expect, right? And there's 30 girls in right. there. Of course. <laughs> My age. So you're like, this is awesome. <laughs> I immediately call, go downstairs to a payphone. Right. And I call my sister. And I say, anything you want for the rest of your life, ask me to do it. Because you just sent me to heaven. <laughs> this is like... So all we did all summer is look for this, <laughs> all the guys. And then I walk into the door, there's, I mean, one's better looking than the next. And they're all like, uh, you know, there were two or three other guys there. But it's okay. A couple, little competition doesn't hurt. When you first got into acting, yes. how did your parents react? They loved it. They thought... See, the thing about being the baby in the family, which I was, basically I was like treated like the prince of the family. My mom and dad were there all the time. Uh, but I hung out with my sisters, like all, always. And, and my, I had a couple of girl cousins. I had a lot of women in my life, and it was a good thing. You know, it was like a real nurturing thing. And, and obviously, that's the way it is. I mean, you're, they, they, uh, they, you know, they weren't easy on me all the time, but they were protective of me all the time. Yeah. I never had to look over, I, I never looked over my shoulder. Like, it was, if they, they always had my back, my sisters. Besides giving me, my sister Angie, giving me a job when I got out of high school and giving me a, what could have been a career, which was, I was making money because she wanted her business to expand. She was adding this whole thing of makeup and we were thinking about doing a line of makeup of Angela's stuff and whatever, but I had to learn about the business. So she sent me to New York to go find somebody to teach me how to apply the makeup, do it, look at different products and everything. And I found a woman and the woman said to me, I do teach a class in makeup, but I do it at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. So I went to the place and I said to them, can I take this woman's course? Yeah. And they said, yes, if you enroll as an actor. Huh. So I said, okay. And I did it. And then I started auditing the other classes. Anyway, long story short, I got bitten by the bug and became an actor instead. What, what was your break? What, what was the big break moment? Was it Taxi? Was there something before Taxi well, that you know, kind of set I you did, on the... Uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest was a pretty damn good movie. Oh, that's right. And, yeah. uh, you know, that was like about five years before, four or five years before Taxi. So, I, but I guess Taxi was the, Taxi was the one that really made it, uh, made it all happen. The transition for you into directing, mm -hmm. um, how did that happen? Like I told you I, that I, I constantly went to the movies when I was a kid, and um, I went to see The Battle of Algiers. You know the movie? It's a yeah. Conor Corvo movie? Yeah. It's been, yeah, it's been a while since I've seen yeah. it. Yeah, and that was the movie that really uh, uh, got me into like uh, the mode of wanting to direct, so I... I, uh, then I started studying about it and trying to figure it out, how to do it. So I, I did short films, Super 8 films, 16 millimeter films, 
And then I got a grant from AFI. Really? Yeah. Happened to be the same time that Cuckoo's Nest was being released. So that was like in 1974, I think. They were, that movie did really well. It was nominated for a million Academy oh, yeah. Awards. And we were shooting, I was shooting uh, the little movie at AFI during the same time that they were like in the theater downtown where they did all the Academy Awards. And um, we were outside shooting, using the crowds. For your short, from, for the short film, yeah. So you're, you're filming a short film and you're filming crowds that mm -hmm. are going to see the movie that you're in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and, winning Academy, and they were inside winning Academy Awards. They'd set up these bleachers out in front and all the movie stars would go in and then they're doing their thing. Meanwhile, a lot of the fans stayed outside waiting right. for them to come out. So the film that we were making, Rhea and I were making, at that time, with the AFI dough, uh, we put a scene in it, in the end, we mean an ending, where the characters in the movie all win Academy Awards, the three characters in the movies. So we went and bought these little statues, and, you know, there was a place called Rent-A-Wreck, which was a, a place where you could get uh, this guy Dave Schwartz would uh, rent old actors and people who didn't have a lot of dough, second-hand cars. They called it rent a wreck It was in, it was in, uh, in, in Los Angeles. And is he from Jersey? That sounds like a Jersey kind of I don't know if he's from thing. Jersey. I'm not sure where Dave Schwartz is from, but it, it, it was a place where everybody went and got their cars. And uh, so we, he had an old limousine. It was a piece of, it was really in disarray. And we rented it from him. He actually loaned it to him, gave it to us. And we got a guy, one of the student filmmakers that we worked with, and he was the driver, and we got him a little hat, and we got in the back seat, and we talked our way in through the stanchions with the guard, yeah. saying, you know. And I took my grandfather's name, Lodovico Mocello, and I used that as the director's name in the movie, and we talked, and we said, Mr. Mocello has to get in. He's got to be in there. And they opened the stanchions. We drove the junky car in. <laughs> Rhea and I got out. And we went into the theater, and we had the cameras rolling, and we had the car there, and we had a few extras of our own background actors who were also part of the crew, and all the students. The way you do, you put your, you, you help your friends out. But the people in the stands didn't know that. Yes, yeah, so they, they like thought that the real people were coming out. And we had, I had a tuxedo on, where he was in a nice dress, and uh, we were all, you know, had people buzzing around us. We came out, and all of a sudden, all these people swarmed around the car, and we got great footage, and we got in, and we left. In the middle of, the, and I, when I cut the film, I just found this. And she was off mic, but she said, like that. Right, and I got somebody to loop it. It was exactly right. Who was he? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know, but they were like all jumping all over the place. It was just like, and it was, of course, that was before Taxi, so nobody knew who I was, and uh, it was all didn't. It wasn't. You can't attribute it to the the fame of television. So I, I worked at Nickelodeon. So before uh, before doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one of my favorite movies of yours mm -hmm. is Death to Smoochie. Mm -hmm. And it's a really stylish movie. Like I you know, I was just rewatching it and like the camera work, mm -hmm. it, it's um it's got a lot of layers, it's really mm -hmm. fast moving. Mm -hmm. Um is that one of your favorites? I it's one of my favorites, yeah. Death it's to Smoochie. Edward Norton and Robin Williams and Anastas Mikos. Oh, yeah, shot great, that. Great DP. Really great DP. Um, you know, uh I mean, one of the things that's neat about that movie to me that I feel like isn't so much of what you, you've done is it's got a kind of mania and a, and, but a heart at the same time. So it's kind of like a, everybody in it is like cranked to 11. Yes. But it's got a big heart and it has yeah. a happy ending. Yeah, it has a happy ending. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, you know, that's such a... It's yes. such a it's such a great thing to get to the the happy ending place. I feel mm. like these days sometimes 
things can end in the dark place. Yeah. And uh, how do you think about that? How do you think about as a storyteller? Well, I do both. So, you know, I like in the War of the Roses, I killed the two people who were the stars of the movie. So, I mean, it's like kind of an ironic thing, you know, that, you know, I mean, it's stylish, it's fun, it's funny and, you know, cool, but they had to die, the two of them. You know, <laughs> Michael and Kathleen had to go. Uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, you know, Edward Norton and Catherine Keener, you keep alive. And you let them kiss at the end. And they, they were loving. Kathleen and Michael, get them out. You know what I mean? Kill them in the end. Now, that was all Warren Adler's book, but, you know, uh, Michael Leeson wrote the screenplay for War of the Roses. And that was, uh, it was good. You've got a moment so, at the end of that movie that I also think, though, mm -hmm. is, is sweet. Because yeah. you come back to you. Well, I've got, yeah. And you have this I, yeah. little monologue. Yeah, the little little thing, the, the wrap up in the end. Because yeah. I'm a guy who's telling him, be careful about marriage and everything. But then I do tell my wife, I'll be home in a little while. Yeah, I'm coming home. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 yeah we end. And you convince him not to hire you, so. You yes. Know. And that's Dan Castellaneta, that guy. You know that? Yeah, is? the actor. Yeah, you know. He, I've, he's, I've seen him in a lot of Well, things. he's the yeah. voice of Homer Simpson. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And he's been doing uh, Homer oh. since the beginning. Forever. Yeah. And uh, Dan, Dan's great. Yeah, I convince him to take another look at marriage before you jump in with the sharks. Who, who, <laughs> I, was the, I, I was the shark. I was the, the lawyer. That's something that before we, um, you know, Lucy's here and I want to bring mm -hmm. her in, but before we Where do- Where is my daughter <laughs> when I need her? That message there is pretty neat because you are basically saying, hey, things are hard. They can go, they can go real wrong, Yeah. but find a way to, to well, resuscitate see, you, I this. Think the Don't line give up, was, right? Uh, try to get to the spot you were in when you, realized that you were in love with this person. Yeah. So try to re-examine that before you take that step and throw everything down the tubes. It's a pretty big pearl of wisdom for, for us as like men when we, yeah. when we, when we hit hard times. You yeah. Know? You know, how have you, has that, did that resonate with you at the time? Did you feel like this is, I, I'm I really was happy making this a, is happening? I was making a, the darkest comedy I could make, you know what I mean? <laughs> Besides Throw Mama and <laughs> From the Train, uh, I'm gonna tell you a story now how I got to uh, War of the Roses. And I was, Michael Leeson, who was the, was the writer, we were working on another movie we were pitching uh, and we were at a studio. We were banging our heads against the wall for like three days or four days and I was, on some stupid diet where I was eating nuts and raisins and, and stuff. And I said, look, Michael, it's Friday. I'll buy lunch, you drive. Okay. So we get in his car, it's a Friday afternoon. And I don't like things under my feet, like in a car. And his car was full of papers and all kinds of stuff. And I'm kicking something. I step on it and I go around. And I go down, I reach down, I pull out the script that's on the floor and it says, the War of the Roses by Michael Leeson. And I say, Michael, didn't you guys make this movie already? I mean, am I, because I sometimes, you know, live under a rock. He said, no, no, we've been trying to get that made and like this, that, and the other thing. And I said, do you mind if I take it away and read it? And Rhea and I were going to a, uh, we were going to Laguna for the weekend to get away from the kids. I read it and I said, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This story is like so, uh, cool and dark and like funny <laughs> and uh, wild. And so I said, I threw my hat in the ring and I, I was really fortunate. And that was like how I got to direct that movie. That was, yeah. But then on the other hand of it, when I was doing research for the movie, when I was preparing, I was in Santa Monica. I remember this like it was yesterday. I got a book, a, a bunch of books in a bookstore and they're all about divorce, right? Because <laughs> I wanted to, you know, and I met with lawyers and did all this kind of stuff. And I'm standing in line with this book, with these books like this, and a woman looked at me and says, 
Oh, I'm sorry. You and Rhea. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh I, said, I said no. <laughs> I know I'm making a movie about it. <laughs> yeah. You guys have been together for a long time. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think I read that you when, when t tell me about when you first met cuz I think wasn't Michael part of the environment there when you guys first met? How we met was I was doing the play that I was about to tell you about. It was called the Shrinking Bride, which I played a stable boy. And and in that play, I was having my way with the landowner's daughter. I was a real scrubby, like, feral beast. So you're like a Frank. A I mean, Frank, really, basically. but only like, you know, really like raw. And, I, and the landowner's daughter and I were banging in the hut, and that was the part of the story. And... The girl that I was playing, the opposite me, the woman next in my, was a had a girlfriend, and she came to the play one night, right, yeah. and that was Rhea. Rhea came to see her friend in the play. My first line in the play, the play opens up me. I'm hanging over the apron of the stage with a broom, or a rake over my shoulder. And I got a torn T-shirt on, and I'm, I'm gobbing like big gobs down into the and she comes out and she says hey Richie what are you doing? I say I'm spitting on the swans <laughs> <laughs> well in the, and then what? we and then we have like a, a sexual encounter we go on so the spitting on the swans this is a disgusting character really great so R Rhea sees and you Rhea and she's falls like, in love immediately <laughs> He's like, I want this guy. <laughs> um, how have you, you know, when we first started our conversation, you were talking about you're on the airplane with your kids. Yes. And you get this great advice to prioritize mm -hmm. your family. Mm -hmm. How has that carried through as you've, well, you've done all these things? You've made all these movies. You're in these TV shows like yeah. Always Sunny, which is just completely crazy. Yeah. Um, well, there you go. Always Sunny. It's, it's like made 15 minutes from my house. 20 minutes from where I lived with the kids when we were, we were all together before the kids, everybody moved out, you know? So it, it still, I was with my kids, like all through all of their, like how many years has Sonny been on the year? 16? Yeah. You know, it's so like you figure it out. Show. Yeah. Those kids were, they were, they grew up. They know Rob, they know Charlie, they know Glenn, they know Caitlin, they know, you know, all of the whole Magilla, but it was a family. So as close as you can keep it. I mean, the, the big advice. I mean, you can't always. You got to go yeah. away. Directors got to go out and go do a play in London or go do a thing there. Or go, an actor's got to do this. You got to go to another, you know, got to travel. You got to support the family. But if you can, the big thing is to keep it yeah. close. Because that makes a difference over the years with the kids. That stuff really matters. So I know you and Rhea um, are sort of separated in mm -hmm. a really amicable way. Yes. And you've, but you've said you're never going to get divorced. No. Well, because it, it reminds me of that moment at the end of the of of um, of the War of the Roses. Oh. In a way, is that oh, except we're not. Yeah, but but they how, weren't amicable. I mean, M Michael and Kathleen. Even no, though Michael was always telling her how much he loved her and everything like that, she had enough of him. She had like I don't think Rhea's had enough of me yet, and I've not had enough of her yet. So we don't, don't have to do that. See, but the idea is when you get to the point where you you know you're on a chandelier and you're hanging from, <laughs> by the thread of the, like a wire. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe it's time. Maybe it's time. What's your advice for husbands out there to stay in a great nah, relationship? Nah, what do you nah, think? You know, you got to you got to have something. I mean, nah, you've got a great nah, relationship I still. Know. I don't know how to keep everything together. I just feel like, you know, you have to like, you know, respect each other and and please don't fight, you know, and have a have a third party tell you what to do. I mean, it's, just makes my skin crawl. And we're about to pause to bring, bring Lucy, Lucy in. Um, Thank goodness. Rescue me, Lucy. <laughs> Before we do, 
Did you have any reservations about your kids following in your footsteps and getting involved no, in the business? No, not at all. I think everybody's got to be encouraged to do what they feel like doing, you know? If you're a painter and a kid wants has been around you all this time and you, they want to paint, you know, there's no reason not to get them paint and let them play around with it and have some fun and enjoy it. And so I feel like everybody should, there's a freedom thing, you know, that has to do with like, you know, life. You got to really let the things flow. Everybody has to have their own, you know, you, you put the brakes on things arbitrarily because you think you know better than somebody else. Doesn't sound right even, does it? No. You know, you go like, uh, you know, listen, what you are is a this. And then you go, what? I'm a that. I'm, a, I'm not this. Oh, yes, you are. You are. A, this is the way you have to be. you got to. Nobody knows anything. Nobody. That's the one great thing if you want to read a, a, w William Goldman, you should read anyway. Right. You know? Yeah, that's the a great screen. Line. No, but really. I mean, nobody knows anything. Nobody. You can't bring me one person that knows it. And we're all like here, like blah, 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 boom, 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 on the planet. You know, I, yeah, okay, here we are. We're talking. Good. I like you. You're a nice guy. And you, everybody here, we're all, you know, okay. That's it. There's no other thing. There's nothing behind it. It's like, you know, there's no secret. It's good advice. Hmm. Let's take a, let's take a little break. We'll get sure. set up to talk sure. about the projects you got going sure. together. And sure. I got a little uh, surprise for you both, mm. but I'm going to, I'll save that to the end. Okay. That, that always should be at the end. Lucy, I got your help to wrangle your old man now. Oh yeah. Oh, this is the he key. Needs some wrangling. He, he, he needs some I can, uh, yeah. I, I need can, the help. Yeah. I can he's, definitely he's help doing you. Fine. I said he needs to help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to talk about your, your project together. Yeah. But first, let's talk about screaming. Oh. So my son, you know, <laughs> my, 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 I'm 100% Italian. My wife is half, but the half, it's a dominant half. So my son came home one day and said, why are you guys so loud? Mm -hmm. Every other house I go to is quiet, but our house is always filled with screaming. Was your house filled with screaming? I mean, this in the best possible kind of screaming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was really loud. It was loud. a loud house. Really loud. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Big if you time. can't already tell just from this conversation, we talk over each other yeah, all, it's the, all time. the time. Yeah, it's all the time. You never finish uh, every And that's like five but people But there's like a hundred of us doing it. Yeah. So, right. uh, yeah. Yeah. We're loud people. We like to, you know, you know, Yell in a very affectionate way. And all you know, our yelling friends, doesn't uh, always. We're like mean... that too. Yeah, they were. I mean, you always had, you know, people mm -hmm. coming over for dinner, and and we'd always have like uh, half a dozen to a dozen people around. But it didn't matter whether they were Italian or whether they were. Well, it does. It's not. There was nothing something to do with about that. the house too, and being around us that gave everyone yeah. license to, you know, just yeah, just spew forth. let loose yeah. and you know. Let yeah, make Talk. things sounds and yeah, whatever. Do all that kind talking of stuff. gibberish. Who cares? Yeah, and then, you yeah. know, you, you, and, you know, you just could do that forever. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to, and nobody could ever get a word in edgewise, <laughs> right? Right. I mean, you just keep going. Yeah. I mean, that would be one of these things where you'd be even in an interview you or just something keep like going that. And you just, just keep going, and you know, the guy's there, and he's a nice it's guy. Like, and yeah, everything. we could just keep but talking. There's no way in. No way. No, because in. The, you know why would he wouldn't want to interrupt us? Why would you us. want to interrupt us? Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. It's the audio editor's worst friggin' nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> but not if we're in the to, shop I to together. Cut. I don't know where this starts. <laughs> yeah. uh, I watched your short film that you did together, Curmudgeon. Mm. Oh, and yeah. right out of the gate, it's like, I'm laughing at things that I think there's a subset of people who are going to laugh right away yeah, who yeah, appreciate yeah. the screaming and the anger. But it, it just matches also, yeah, the energy of this sort of like... Yeah, I'm like, I'm yelling at you and busting your balls and whatever, but I still love you, you know? Like Absolutely. That's kind of the, the way it is. It goes way without saying. Yes. Yeah, but you said it. Yeah. But it's okay, you said it. <laughs> I mean, the always sunny energy's got a, got a similar thing going with the screaming, yeah. right, from, yeah. right from the they, start. They never shut up. <laughs> <laughs> They're it's really passionate about... Constant talking. Uh, yeah. yeah. Rob and Glenn and Caitlin and Charlie. Mm -hmm. And then... I fit right in. You do? Yeah. 
So when did you first realize you wanted to get into the family business? Um, was it when, when, when you were a little girl and you were... I mean, I think that, like, because, like, growing up with it, you know, I was surrounded by it and I admired my parents so much um, and love, you know, movies and TV and going to the theater. So it was just sort of, like, embedded in me. But I, um, I didn't start acting, I think, until high school. Once I started doing theater and then went to college, I was like, decided I wanted to give it a shot because um, I was also very much, because I grew up in the business, like very much aware of the perils and um, the, you know, hardships that go into, um, into yeah. the lifestyle of even even very successful, you know, well-known actors. Knowing smiles from pop. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no. it's always, you're always pushing the rock up the hill. Yeah, always, yeah, always. always. Doesn't matter yeah. where you are. Did you feel like, did you feel lucky? Like, did you fe have a sense that your 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 both your parents were able to be with you in a way that, you know, being in entertainment wasn't happening with other other kids and other. It's hard. It's hard to do it when you're in this kind of business. Yeah, I think so. I I always knew that, you know. I, the family dynamic we had growing up was just like family was number one. You know, so um, I I was very much aware of that. And it, there was always, like, a huge, like, emphasis for all of us to always be doing something together. Like, you know, we would always have dinner, you know, mm -hmm. every night we'd have dinner together, unless, like, someone was out of town or whatever. But if if we were all in town, we would all sit at dinner, you know? Yeah, and I was saying I was really fortunate that I was able to, like, uh, and same thing with Rhea. I mean, I, I had Taxi. I was finishing up with Taxi when you guys were coming around. Uh, but Rhea was still doing Cheers. And, uh, you I mean, know. It was the biggest shows on TV. She, she, uh, <laughs> she was right there at Paramount. You know, great. You know what I mean? It's supposed to be in Boston. Doing, yeah. Right? But they did it in, in uh, Hollywood. So it, that's the great thing about it. You know, yeah. Uh, they got to be... Uh, you know, she got to be with the kids all the time, and yeah, we so went to we went to daycare on the Paramount lot. <laughs> no, seriously, yeah. 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 Has it been weird to have your dad become a meme? No, <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's 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 evolved. When I when when we were coming out here, I told my son Mateo, I was like, we're gonna go we're gonna go uh, spend some time interviewing Danny DeVito and his daughter, and he's like. Oh my gosh! You know Danny DeVito's a meme, which you know can mean everything from just these images to yeah, just yeah, like it's not a single meme. No, right? it's a whole no, thing. No, it's just There's like an a ecosystem. Lots of things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, uh, I, th I think it's cool. Really, really you know, cool. it's yeah. a way to stay relevant. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. uh, get to let somebody tap the, to themselves. Yeah, or, whatever. Yeah. You know. I don't have anything to say about it. Yeah. It's all I good. mean. I think it's cool that like a uh, different generation, you know, can relate to him in in that way. There's so. not many people who cross over like, yeah, in, in that way when right? I, when you think about it. It's hard to say, you know, usually we 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 go into the cringe territory. I'm already there for my son. I'm already uh -huh. full oh, cringe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um what a uh, How old is you? How, yeah. He's 18. He's 18. Yeah. Wow. You you look young. 18 year old. I was 28 when he was born. Okay, you were you were younger. Yeah, yeah so I was when they were born. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I gotta ask. So your dad gets so crazy in Always Sunny, in yeah. particular. Yeah. You know, has there ever been a point where you're like, Dad, you've gone too far with 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 this with Frank, or is it just it's it's just a blast all the it's time? It's not. It's I would never tell him he went too far, but like. I don't always watch it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean, there's only so many times you can watch your dad nakedly fall out of a couch. You know what I mean? It's it's like, I, I, I would never though, uh, I would never tamper it down yeah. or or you know. Well, you I can give. I can. I can. Uh, you know. You can give me notes. I, I, yeah, I can yeah, give you notes, sure. and I can. You know. And make fun of you yeah, and of course. whatever. Absolutely. Um, but uh, <laughs> I mean, that's not going to stop him. No, and, no, no. And You're why probably just it? fueling no, because it. Exactly. Because it's like the thing that that <laughs> we talked. We we had a nice conversation before, but we're talking about freedom. You know, if mm -hmm. you're talking about freedom, 
basic thing is, you know, you don't want to insult anybody. You don't want to invade anybody's space. You don't want anybody to feel bad. You don't want to, you know, knock somebody off their perch or whatever yeah. it is. So, you know, you, you allow things. You embrace them, especially if you love them, which we do love yeah. each other. Um, and I know. mean, like, that's just, like, who you are, too. Yeah, I'm not going to, like, it's... hurt anybody by taking my... Unless and... it's, you know... You you look at me and faint. No, yeah, when you no. see me no. come out of a couch naked, <laughs> and then you faint, and it's you hurt yourself when you fell. What? Oh, well, that's it right. was because it's not of Danny. Your fault. It's I not didn't... really not your fault. No, that's watch because, where you, you know... are standing when you watch me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He was the penguin. <laughs> I know. You know, and like there's a great I, <laughs> yeah. I like I remember coming him coming home like after one of like the first like hair and makeup tests or whatever and he had did he keep three, it on and come home in well, the makeup no he but the one thing he couldn't take off were his three acrylic nails like that were like black right you know uh little you know penguin nails yeah and and he, i remember just being like what is like frightening <laughs> That, that, you was, know. that was really that was really scary. Yeah, it was really scary. Yeah, they, and V. Neal, who was the makeup yeah. artist who did the, the Penguin, uh, Oswald Cobblepot, was she was the best and the greatest. And she did those, and I had to keep those on. But and everything else, I have a picture. There's a picture of the three of them: uh, uh, Lucy, Gracie, and Jake in a makeup trailer. It's my back. And the makeup artist is finishing up my makeup for Oswald. And the looks on their faces are like, <laughs> just, you know, there's this little tiny little it's just movie magic. Of kids, you know. <laughs> What's your favorite role that your dad has ever played? Mm. Do you have one? Can you, does I it mean, come to I, mind? There's so many, but I, I really like, um, I love uh, Throw Mama from the Train. And I love, I love Owen. Mm. Um, yeah, well, I I also sweet, sweet another one that like goes under the radar a lot, but I always mention is um, uh, Living Out Loud, which was a movie with that he did with Holly Hunter and mm -hmm. um, Richard Legrovne is um, directed and wrote, and um, it's just a really um, wonderful performance. Yeah, it's a good good, good yeah. script. And uh, and of course Matilda. Tilda's good one. Harry Wormwood. That's it. I understand that that happened. You got on, involved in that project because your girls because loved of the them. book. They yeah. brought, we were starting with, we had Jake, who's the baby, and uh, she's the oldest, and then there's Gracie in the middle. They're all bunched there. And we were reading picture books, basically, you know, a lot of Chris Von Allsberg, uh, beautiful pictures, and this, that, and the other thing. King Bidgood and all those famous, mm -hmm. the Tiki Tiki Tembo. And then they came in with this Roald Dahl book. Now I had never, I knew Roald Dahl, not, you know, knew him, but I mean, I knew of yeah. him. And I, but I, I had no idea about Matilda. And they came in and they said, we want to read this book. And uh, that's, and so every night we sat and we, we read, yeah. read a chapter of uh, his great book, Matilda. and. And Rhea and I loved it. They loved it. And we said, uh, boy, this would be, you know, this would be really make a great movie. So we started exploring that. Rhea and I, I did big time. And, and then we found uh, somebody who had the rights to it and was preparing something. So I just tried to insinuate myself into it, and I did. But that was because of them, it was basically. Is, is there a big lesson that you've learned from your dad about how to navigate? You know, he said a couple times in our conversation, he sort of in, injected himself into the process, but that's mm -hmm. what you have to do, right? Whenever you want to make something happen. Yeah. How, what kind of lessons have you learned from him about yeah, I mean, career? Definitely uh, being, um, sticking, sticking to your guns, but also being, you know, adaptable and, um, you know, tenacious and kind of like, you know, n not giving up, you know, like that's a, a lot, one door closes, another opens sort of thing. And, um, you know, kind of, and I think also sticking to your gut, 
um, and the and trying to remember throughout the process that initial feeling of why you're actually doing it in the first place. So you have a new project on Broadway. Yes. So tell me about this. Yes. Danny, why don't you start? I need that. <laughs> That's the name of it. Uh, well, Lucy and I, all the, all all during those uh, times that she's talking about, like when she's coming up, thinking about becoming an actress, whatever, and blah, blah, we always talk, and so we talk all the time, and the family is that way too, everybody talks to each other and gives each other their opinions and stuff like that. So long story short, we become, we uh, the pandemic hits and Lucy's been through her Brown University and done a lot of stuff and uh, guest starring parts and this, that, and the other thing. I, do, I did a lot of theater in New York mm -hmm. and um, this small theater um, was doing a uh, benefit Zoom reading because it was the pandemic. Right. Mm. Um, no one was actually uh, doing anything in person. And um, and I was like, okay, yeah, I'll do, I'll, I'll do this. And they're like, would your dad do it too? And I was just <laughs> like, well, normally I would never ask him, really, mm. because it's like whatever, but it was like, it's Zoom. Yeah. We're playing, it's a- It's, it's not a big imposition. It, it's, a te it's a 15 minute play or whatever it is. I knew the director. So I roped him into doing it, and I had um, a great time. We had a great time. And we we had went, a great time. It, it was a, it was a story about a, a father and a daughter who were on a ski trip, and they go off the mountain. Accidentally, they they fly off the edge of this mountain, and they're hanging onto a tree. Uh, so we we actually went in the yard and got a a log and <laughs> and st and stuck it in front of the zoom camera, and we were there. And we did our scenes. We got to know the father and daughter in the play, kind of get to a point, and we realized that we're. It was a. It was, they were having a very, um, like, kind of funny, but uh, then deep conversation. Mm. Uh, the whole while, it turns out they were actually only like three feet above the ground, and they could have. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 But, so you got that yeah. great little button yeah, yeah. reveal at the yeah. end. Yeah. We worked with Moritz von Stupnagel, who is this um, amazing director, and I said to him afterwards, we were like, we had the best time. Uh, if you ever hear of a play that would be good for us to do together, it'd be so much fun. Let's like work on something. And this was like 2020. And he, right. um, and he like was like, yeah, that'd be great. And then um, like a month later, he was like, I know a writer who might be interested in writing something for you guys. Would you uh, want to Zoom again? And um, yeah, and uh, and we met Teresa. And we met Teresa Rebeck, mm -hmm. who is an incredible playwright. And over the course of like a few months, we met and developed like started talking about these characters she talked about what she wanted to write about and um we talked about kind of like this uh simple like father-daughter relationship which would be something that we would want to explore on stage and um and then she wrote this amazing play and we did a couple of workshops of it and we're doing it yeah, we're, we're doing it like <laughs> but it was like a very like organic um oh, that's great yeah very very cool so it's an original story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. an original story. And I, I've worked at the Roundabout before, and it's a wonderful theater. Therese is a wonderful writer, and Moritz, Moritz is a brilliant director, and we're, we're in good hands. Yeah. So is th this is your first, is this going to be your first time performing on, on Broadway? Yeah, on Broadway, yeah. It's my Broadway debut. It's a, your debut. My debut. It's your debut. <laughs> Are you nervous? For sure. <laughs> oh, God. Absolutely. Are you nervous every time? Excited. Yes. Right? Oh, Danny, yes. how about you? Do you yeah. get nervous every oh, time? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. You got to be. Otherwise, it's like, hmm. Yes. How much of the two of you is in your characters? Is Since it's originally developed, like, mm. did, did, is, there a, is there some rhyming with uh, who you are as people in your relationship? Or is it really a, like, a, 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 a departure? It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a bit of a departure, but I would there's say... There's always something of you in the... There's always something. You know, in, yeah. the, in the characters. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you should always want that, too. You should try to find something, no matter whether it's, a, a, you know... A, and we a, are playing father and daughter. Yeah, father and daughter. So that's, right. that's, that's real. Yeah. I think thematically, too, we can, mm -hmm. re you can relate to a lot of 
um, about what's going on mm -hmm. without you know just saying what the play is about. Mm -hmm. Is there screaming? Is there is there some is there some fun high energy? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Devito action in this play? Yeah. To be had. There's gonna be some fun fun banter, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she did a great job, Teresa. Yeah. We'll be really yelling good. at each other. Yeah. All right, I have some questions, some some rapid fire questions for okay. you both. Okay. These are fun. When okay. we have time, we like to ask them of uh, of our guests. So the first is, if you could relive one moment with your dad, which would it be? One of the big things, we used to go fishing together, and there was a little place called Shark River, and there were no sharks. I didn't, at least I didn't see any. Anyway, and we would fish for... Uh, uh, flounder and fluke and stuff like that in, the, in Jersey. And it was, this was when Shark River was not polluted. <laughs> and uh, you could It might eat, be clean again, you, Jersey's cleaned up. Yeah, maybe. You could eat the fish anyway. So the idea is we were out there and it was, it was raining and we were both all bundled up. We had the car there. So, you know, uh, we had two poles planted in the, you know, in the, in the ground. He said, you know, I'm gonna go, go check, uh, I'm gonna have a cigarette or something. Go check the line, mm -hmm. right? I said, oh, okay, yeah, and it's raining. And, and he, he goes in and he's smoking a cigarette or whatever. And I went and I picked it up and, and there, was a meaty, there was a beautiful fish on it. Mm. I reeled it in and I felt incredible. But I realized, you know, <laughs> He put Later, it on there. He didn't put it on there, Aww. but he caught the fish. Yeah. And, and oh. he just nonchalantly didn't tell me that it was, it was you on know, already on the line when I went out to check the line. And, uh, he let, you know, I, I felt like I caught that fish, oh but I kind of knew after a while that uh, that old Danny boy <laughs> <laughs> gave me a present. Oh, yeah. God, that's so sweet. Yeah. What do you think, Lucy? Got one? I don't know, there's just like so many. You know, when you're learn that there's no Santa Claus. Oh yeah, mm. and, that's a tough one as um, a parent. Mm. And, it's a transition. Uh, <laughs> but like, as the kid, you're just like, God, of course there's no Santa Claus, like whatever. And, but I had two younger siblings who still knew that there was Santa. And um, he let me stay up and do the Santa preparations for when the other kids went to bed, mm. you know, and... I remember that. Um, so we... Like it was yesterday. So we, um... That's amazing. You yeah. know, I got to eat the cookies and make a mess <laughs> make and spill a mess. the milk. We, we used to do and then we put we would, the... Yeah. And then we would, um, we would always put, um... Carrots and celery out for the reindeer. For the reindeer. Yeah, yeah. And, Did you eat those and, or? Well, yeah, know, so we, you left them to your. Well, what we would do, we do yeah, is, you tell is, is he was like, "This is what you do," and he like, I, "This is this was his tutorial was chewing up carrots and then <laughs> spitting them out all over the stoop." So oh, we would just be, fire, chew, I'd just fire. be like, "It was so much yeah, fun." I, 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 like yeah. just spraying carrots and celery. Oh, that's great. Well, because you know, the reindeer were not, they were, you know, they yeah. were sloppy. And, yeah, yeah, and they were in a rush. <laughs> they were in a hurry. They had so many get houses to, the next to go house. to. Yeah. Yeah. They're crazy yeah. animals. They're not neat. Yeah. yeah. And that's a really, I remember <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's really uh, sweet because you are sweet. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my God, that's great. Danny, this is for you. How have you most damaged your kids, either physically or mentally? Hmm. Well, you could tell the Barracuda story. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I, 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 I'm not a good swimmer, and I'm not a, and I'm not a very brave person. <laughs> but Lucy and I were snorkeling, and, and, uh, and... We were on vacation. We were on vacation. Yeah. And I was holding on to her, like, for dear life, because I was like, you know... I, wouldn't, I was like, what? Yeah, I was like going to say, how old 11? were you? 11? Yeah, 11 yeah. years old. And I was... I'm, I don't like being underwater. I don't like other any place where there's like a so lion, a tiger, so or a bear. So you stayed on the on the sand I'm a, at the yeah, Jersey I'm Shore. You're not in, no, yeah. I'm landlocked. And we got the snorkel things, yep. and the, the masks, and we're going along. And we go, we're doing the thing, and I see a barracuda come at me, us, oh. and I just left. <laughs> 
and I left her. <laughs> you left, oh, you actually you left. Her. I left. Yeah. So, I just got the hell out of there. We're like, we're like, hang on. They were just like, Ooh. and then I remember I was like, great. Ah! Oh, he's and the barracuda okay. like looked at us and it was like, oh. <laughs> I mean, it came at us. It yeah, came at us. They're gnarly. I, they're gnarly. Yeah. yeah. And I, I turn around and he's gone. <laughs> I was like about a, be a 20 feet away already. <laughs> It's okay. I got away. I got, got away. away. I got so away. No, then, nobody but, got but I didn't let him live nobody it down. Got, no, but be constantly. You and know, I was like, you I, left me. I left her in the with the barracuda. Yeah. Well, I just got my out of there. I think there's a Swedish movie that centers around this. Force majeure. Force majeure. Right? Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> it's like, the avalanche comes. It is out of there. <laughs> it's like and you're trying to recover for the rest of your yeah, life yeah, yeah. for that. Yeah. Okay. Lucy, mm -hmm. what's your favorite dad expression? Long story short. Okay. No. <laughs> That's it? No. Long story short? <laughs> but, um, there's, there's a lot of them. <laughs> well, a lot of them have to do with, like, <laughs> yeah, so he would, everything is a long story short. Um, but uh, I got to take a leak. <laughs> <laughs> I already my, did. I took my, a week before my we started. My back teeth are floating. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Danny, what's your favorite dish to cook? Pasta. I mean, you know. Straightforward. I mean, I straightforward, make a lot, you know, a lot of garlic, basil, all good olive oil, a little hot pepper, salt and pepper. Make sure you, whatever pasta you cook, you don't overcook it, you know, so it's al dente, which means dente teeth. You got to mm -hmm. be able to bite into it, but you know how you yeah. do that. You take the noodle and you, the pasta and you cut it and you look in the middle and if you see that white dot, it's depending on how how white that dot is, whether it's- Yeah, like, how much you know, crunch is still in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I like that and uh, you know- I'd make What about it. the pun, pun, puttanesca? I don't make the, well- Put, I, Puttanesca? Puttanesca, I, but, you know. But you got a great story about the puttanesca. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. My sister Angie, who I told you was very important in my life. Yeah. It was very important in my life as well. Take but, it away. Uh, yeah, she was making Putinesca one day, and um, she was she was very tiny, um, smaller than both of us, if you can believe it. And <laughs> um, she had, like, the stove was, like, up to here, you know, on her, and she was, like, spinning the sauce, so you know, stirring the sauce, mm. and she turned to me, and she was said... It's the horse sauce. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, um, and uh, so, <laughs> but I love, I love the horse sauce. But you like, see that that kind of yeah. thing you could say in the house. Yeah, that was all. You could, you know, anything like that. All right. What's your favorite dad joke or shtick to play with the kids, Danny? My my favorite. Oh, with the kids? Yeah. Oh, it was getting them to eat. It was oh, yeah. just. <laughs> The greatest, <laughs> because you go to a restaurant or you go at, or you're at home, they're not at the table, they're under the table, they're in the the, the, the this, the that, yeah, the other bunch thing. of animals, right? So what you do is when they're little, you go, you take a piece of your chicken or your fish or your whatever you got, and you stick it on a table and you go, all right, listen, nobody, nobody, touch that chicken. You touch that chicken, you're gonna have to answer to me. And that's it. Keep your hands off my chicken, everybody. Meanwhile, you got the, yeah. you know, the underneath, the, the in the, the Netherlands, the hand grab. Yeah, come on, come on, come grab it. And they'd eat like, they'd eat more chicken or more fish or more. <laughs> this strand of pasta is mine right there. Nobody go near it. Wait a minute, I'm gonna put a little cheese on it. All right. Nobody touched that pasta. <laughs> Sounds a so little like feeding, like feeding the dogs. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. no, yeah. yeah, yeah. They, they, it was fun. and it happened, and it worked in restaurants too. That was my favorite. <laughs> you gotta, do you have to keep that approach to the neighborhood restaurants, or is it, you keep, you know, you take that one on the road? I mean, we never really ha were good with manners, you know, so. No, they, they were all we over the place. Yeah, we did. I mean, I did under the table. You're in. A, they always want to sit with the with the banquet was the booth because they didn't care about the. They wanted to run around it. 
We were that family that you complain yeah. about. Yeah, the one that's yeah. well, they were just like, shut up. It was like, what are they doing in here? Why are they bringing their kids yeah. to a restaurant? They should just eat yeah. at home. We, we, that's what, that was us. Yeah, yeah, that was us. That, that yeah. was us the reveal is yeah. it sounds like a really loud restaurant filled with people and the camera swings and it's just you guys and one, and one other couple. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Danny, what's the most valuable thing you've learned from your children? Understanding. You have to be really understanding that they cut us an amazing amount of slack, uh, my kids. So they know, I guess they read me, they know Rhea, you know, they know the, everything, the dynamic, and uh, they, they really are generous when it comes to that. What's your, the number one lesson you've learned from your dad? Generosity is a good one. I think that he is always giving and always um, uh, available, you know, with his time and his thoughts. And, um, you know, yeah, m making time for the people you love, you know, I think that um, that was, that's always been a big one. I have one more thing to share with you guys. Mm -hmm. So uh, my wife and I have been trying to get our Italian citizenship. Mm. Be oh, good. Because uh, we're Italian and because mm -hmm. our, our son, we're thinking maybe we'll send him to Italy for school and mm -hmm. it'd be neat if he could work while he's there. Mm -hmm. So we work with this company, um, Bella Italia Genealogy. Mm -hmm. And so while Lisa was talking to them, she said, she met, she said, hey, do you think you could do Danny DeVito's, uh, her, like, genealogy? Mm -hmm. And they got so excited that they started sending us all this stuff so earlier this morning, this was like kind of on a lark. So earlier this morning, we were putting this thing together. And so I have this little, I have a little thing for you both. It's, it's a family tree that goes back to the 1700s. Oh my God. Oh. So take a look oh at this. Oh my God. So if you open it up. Oh. Oh. This is a little letter from Bella Italia, but you can see on both sides, Whoa. all the way back five generations. Oh my God. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is Thank it. you. Wow, that is it's so beautiful. What Thank a you gift. so much. How do you think about your heritage, you know, in this American experience that we have? You know, it's, it's a funny thing, you know, when you have a strong sort of heritage, it kind of runs alongside being American. It's mm -hmm. like we're American, but we're Italian American, and it's mm -hmm. a particular thing. How do you think about it? Mm. That connection to your heritage. I have a strong connection to like our family. Um, I and I guess Italy. My and my mom is Jewish. You know. Right. Yeah. Um, so you so got. There's, it's all. It's it's there's, it's. A, there's a lot of similarities. There's a lot team. of similarities. I mean. Yeah. Honestly, a lot of it it's revolves around food and hanging out. Um, screaming. You know. Yeah. <laughs> screaming. Um, you know, kind of, maybe kind of sense of humor. Master Cusa was my dad's mom. Yes. Yeah. She's the one I knew, Mariangela. Mariangela. So I would go, all right, this a quick, quick little, make a long story short, <laughs> quick, quick little thing. Um, when we used to go up through the Staten, through Staten Island and go over to the, you know, go to Brooklyn, drive up every weekend to see her, I was a little boy. She was like in her 80s. And she had broken her hip, which is a common yeah. this little thing. And, but she always wanted me to be there. And uh, I would uh, bring a plate of soup mm -hmm. to my grandma. And I remember in my, in my aunt's house, where she lived in this rose colored room with all the saints on the walls <laughs> and all the <laughs> statues. Right, and there were lace curtains, and there was these little doors that opened up into the living room, and I would go in with the plate of soup, and there was a little metal table, I remember. I'd stick it on the table, mm -hmm. and when I got close to her, her, her face was like, I mean, just brown and filled with like, you know, a life, and she hugged me. She had this nightdress on, and and I remember 
loving being in that room. It was a weird feeling because mm-hmm. I was a little kid. And then I would let her eat. And I'd go outside and I'd stay close to the to the door. Mm-hmm. It's very emotional. Mm-hmm. She used to bang on the on the plate. Tink, 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 <laughs> tink. And then I would come back in. Oh. Right. And I'd get the the plate and mm-hmm. take it back. And mm-hmm. I was like it was like on the weekends. I did that on Sundays oh. when I was a kid. Dad, this is really beautiful. Thank you very much for this. It's a treasure. Yeah. I have one last question for you. Uh, we ask this of every uh, sure. all of our guests. Sure. Um, uh, you know, we call this "Dad Saves America" because I, I think that you know, at, as a man, embracing being a dad is maybe I think the best thing you can do for for your family, and that ladders up to your community and ultimately to the country and making the country a better place for everybody. Mm-hmm. And so as a storyteller, you know, you think about the role you play, the role you're going to play as an actor, the role of your protagonist. How do you think of your role in the American story? As a person who's in the limelight, you know, you get up in a baseball game or a a basketball game and everybody knows you. Everybody knows you. Yeah. So if if that means anything, uh, if the generosity that I profess for the caring that I feel for everybody in the world. If that makes a difference, then each individual person, I'm hoping, will use that to make the world a better place for our children. Thinking about myself as having a role in, you know, what it means to make the world a better place seems like a really, like, huge um and kind of like overwhelming um concept but i think that you know from a micro level like just being around people who um who i can connect with if i can do that like on you know my my smaller inner circle you know then that's one step forward to you know branching out and reaching others i don't know just trying to be a good human. I want to thank you both so much for being on Dad Saves America. It's been a real honor. Thank you so much. Nice being here. Thanks for having us.